want to talk about Google Web Stories. These are one of the latest and greatest marketing trends, especially if you are a blogger or if you have any sort of a website. These stories help to send traffic back to your website. So today I want to do a tutorial and show you how to create a Google Web Story. The first step is you need to install the plugin in the back end of your WordPress site, and then you will walk through setting it up. I recommend setting up a new analytics property under your Google Analytics so that you can track these and that they're not tracked in the actual analytics in your site, but they're a separate property. Once all of that's set up, you will simply log into the back end of WordPress. You'll see the stories plug in here and you'll go to my stories. These are stories that I've created. Let's show, I'll show you a quick one just so you can get a feel for what stories look like. And then we will walk through creating a story. So these stories show up in Google Discover on um, the Android app, the iPhone app, and they're a great way to get your site discovered. You can see that they kind of move through animation and they're just a great way to showcase your website and to showcase your blog posts or your products or your services. You can also see that they have the feature where you can click to learn more or click for a call to action at the bottom of the slides and it takes you to your site. So if somebody was watching that story and they wanted to see the actual recipe for the soup, they can click learn more and it takes them to my site, which is the end goal, of course, to get new site traffic to your site. So to create a story, there are two options. You can click create new story, which is here. It gives you a blank template or you can click explore templates, which is what I recommend, especially if you're new to this. The templates are, they're pretty good. Um, uh, we're hoping that they add more templates as this goes on and I'm assuming that they will. But the thing is, is the templates are very easy to switch different elements around and to customize. Whereas the create new story piece, you're starting from the ground up. And unless you're familiar with Photoshop and working in layers, um, it can be a little difficult and time consuming to kind of start from the ground up. So if you're just starting to work with these, I definitely recommend using the templates. So today I want to use a, we'll use a recipe template. And again, I mean, you don't have to use just this template for just recipes. You can use any of these templates for recipes. Um, or if you wanted to use the food and stuff template for to showcase your services, you can absolutely do that. But just for today's tutorial, we will use this template. So you click use template. And then as it's pulling this up, I, do, I will say I like to pull up in another browser tab, the blog post or the page that I'm sending people to from stories just so that I have that right in front of me. It's easily accessible and I know I can pull text from there. I know what I'm looking at and where I'm sending people. So today we will create a story for, we'll just go with my latest DIY tutorial, which is a DIY popcorn Valentine's tutorial on my lifestyle blog. And you can see here, once this loads, you can see the whole dashboard, which has various templates down here at the bottom. You can see your media library from your site is here. You can also see there are just a lot of various elements. So the first step that we want to do is we want to add a title right here. So we'll just add DIY. And that's the title of the story. The next step is to go to document to this tab right here. And you want to make sure that this is all completed. So your logo's here. You want to make sure that you have a cover image. There is still some chatter about what size the cover image needs to be. Um, you may see an error about the cover image, but I really try to make it a good kind of 1500 by 2500 size image or around that. Um, if you're using a square image, you'll get an error. Um, same if you're using a horizontal image. So I really try to use a vertical image. But again, it, it's not really known at this point. Um, basic, you know, what's what happens if you don't use their exact dimensions? What happens right now is is it will crop it 
for the cover of the story. So you're, you're fine with that. Um, then for the story description, I like to just pull a couple of sentences from the actual blog post because I know that those are already SEO optimized. You can use up to 200 characters for your description. And then here for the permalink, you want to make this permalink something that is different from the actual URL of your blog post just for search purposes. So you could add web story to the end of it. You could add story to the end of it, um, but something just to differentiate that. Right here also is the page advancement. So you can up or lower that. Um, I like to keep it between five and seven seconds. Um, I would not change this to manual because you want the story to advance automatically for people watching. Also over here, you'll see there's a checklist. Um, you'll see high priority. Again, it shows you here the cover image is the wrong aspect ratio. I would ignore that for right now as long as you just make sure you have a cover image. Like I said, it will crop that um, in there for you. And so it's going to give you recommendations here as well that you can walk through. I have seen some people um, kind of panic, so to speak, because of all of these recommendations and really get bogged down in that. At this point, I would focus on des the design of the story, really adding good call to actions to each page or at least every other page of the story. And then as we see, as you're seeing more traffic, you can always go back through and update based on the checklist. I would not spend a ton of time working through all of those checklist items and uh, because you will get very bogged down on that and get very frustrated. Um, so let's start with designing it. You can delete elements by clicking them, clicking delete. Um, we want to make the cover very simple but very appealing. So you will see that I'm here scrolling down in my media library and looking for a photo for um, this that I am creating. So here's a good photo in my media library. Again, you can drag it kind of in and out. That makes it the background. And you'll see here is your text. You can also, if you want to, click on the background again and you can give it an overlay. So like a darker overlay so that the text pops. You can change the percentage of kind of how dark the overlay is, things like that. Um, so we will add a title. And again, you can kind of drag the text box here. If you've worked at all in um, Photoshop or even in Canva, this should be pretty familiar to you the way that all of this works. So over here is you can change the text style. You can change the size. You can do a lot of things over here in this panel. Um, you can also fill in the text box, highlight it, which is kind of a cool feature. Um, you can change the color of that text box. And again, is this feed, as Google rolls out more stories features, I have a feeling that they'll, or as they focus on stories more, let's put it that way. I have a feeling they'll add more features, more design tools, things like that. But for right now, this is just kind of, again, a general overview of, um, you know, what it, what it looks like and how to create one. And here is a very important piece of this. So to get the read more, swipe up sort of feature on stories, which of course is huge because we want people to go to your site, you just click on the actual page right here. You see it highlights this blue box around it. And then for the page attachment, you add the link where you want them to go to on your site here. You can also change this text be a stronger call to action. You also see here that this overlay box is kind of marking out the text. So I would move the overlay box. As of now, there is no way to move where the swipe up, this little arrow kind of call to action is. So you kind of have to just move the other elements in the design around that. Um, 
to get it where you want it. Another thing too is, is you can select elements and you can select the way that it animates here. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do for accessibility. I would definitely make sure that you have some sort of alt text on each image. So that one, that helps us search, but just two for accessibility. And then you can move on. You can see that there are other templates here. If you wanted to delete this page, you could delete pages. Um, you can also duplicate pages or add pages here. Here's your undo button. Um, if you click play, it will play through your story so you can kind of see how it plays through, what it looks like, um, and all of that. There are also some other elements up here, such as stock images, videos, and GIFs that you can use. Here are some text options. There are a lot of cool text options that you can, of course, use. Here are some shapes, and those are kind of the design elements that you have in there. Um, a lot of people are, there's a lot of chatter about how many pages your story should be, how many slides. I recommend at least seven slides. This will help with monetization in the future um, to run ads and things like that. Um, there is also a lot of chatter about should you make more than one story per blog post or per page. Um, at this point, you know, I, I would definitely make stories for say your top 25 to 100 posts, of course, depending on what you have time for. Um, and then go back and create, you know, more stories, different designs, things like that. We have not seen anything that says you can't create more than one story per blog post, per page, et cetera. But again, that could change. Um, so there, there's still, like I said, a lot of unknowns with these. Once you get your design elements put in, um, you can click publish here. It will publish it. It's already, once you publish it, it's out there. Um, and you can also, another feature of these stories is, is you can have specific elements. You can also have them link. So you could have this element link to the blog post as well. Um, or if, for example, you're doing a page that has maybe a book on it, that's an affiliate link, you could click that actual book and have that book lead to its specific affiliate link. Um, one thing I do recommend is I would not put a ton of links, say 15 books or 15 affiliate products on a page and try and link all of them because people are going to get confused um, with all of those links there. So I would really, I have been sticking to this just call to action down at the bottom. It's been working very well to convert traffic to my site, also to client sites. Um, but again, that's totally up to you, but that is an option that you can link various elements um, to various places. So that's, that is an option there. But again, that's a quick overview, how to create Google stories. Please let me know what questions you have. Also, I am offering Google stories management and creation. Um, those packages are listed on my website. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm always available to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you soon.